Right then folks, there's a little gate back there I've just come through. Met a very quiet old lady. Looked like a one of those classic natural uh, sort of insect people, you know, she just looked apart somehow. But she didn't really speak, she sort of smiled. I think she was real. And she was wandering around looking, she looked really like contented. They've done the wall quite a lot. There's still a bit of a gap there. Sometimes I go across to the across the field to a gate right over there. I haven't seen cows in here for a while, but maybe it was the cows that knocked the wall down. So they rub themselves up again things when they're itchy. Well, this is a little wood that I discovered during my walking early days, following retirement and just really looking for places to explore and come and find peace and this this is where I've, I come it's very autumnal the weather today I think very autumnal and this place can be such a peaceful place when it's got the bluebells and stuff and summer flowers and it can also look quite like a graveyard. They've have cut they did cut a lot of trees down. But it, they call it ash back. And they're letting it rot into the soil. To replenish the soil. Well I seem to spend a lot of time over here once. On different walks, going to Crook's Peak, coming back from Crook's Peak. Um There's a pile that they're talking about. They'll just let it rot and replenish the soil, providing food for the trees, their family here. Yeah. I've been in that field as well. But you can't do a lot of that in the summer. Um, obviously there's lots and lots of ticks about. Um, and it's very, very overgrown in there this time of year. But I have been in there as well. I've been in the wood in different areas. It's, uh, it's very, very difficult in the summer because everything goes wild. <sighs> yeah, I don't, you don't really see that many people. I've never seen that old lady before. And uh, she did have a bit of technology with her, I noticed. She, she looked like something out of the 18th century, but, I mean, but she had some technology with her, so I know she must be real, that she wasn't a ghost. And she had very, very white hair, but it could have been blonde once, in bunches, and a hat, and these old sort of baggy trousers, uh, from about 200 years ago, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I've been come through there and I've been through there. Just taking a few pictures as we go. A couple of little flowers, look. Touch wood. I haven't quite had the indigestion yet because I haven't had to go uphill. I'm just taking my time, I'm enjoying taking my time. It's nice not to rush, I know I've got the time to do this. Like I said, I know I've got to get my skates on once it gets to two o'clock. Because I know then the bus will be getting ready to leave Weston. There's one on the way over now, but uh, that's not the one, I'm getting one an hour after that one. So we don't have to rush. We don't have to rush. Sometimes when I don't rush, I then suddenly realise oh, I'm going to have to because I've done too slow. 
Coming up to a gate now, a bit more of this little walk. Skirting the Hutton Wood. Spooky Hutton Wood. There was a, a horse with a really bad cough that used to be in there. I don't know if it's died. Had this awful cough, this horse. And uh, so that's it. Look. Been through that little tiny patch, but it's always been such a lovely little patch to go to wander through. I've always enjoyed it. I haven't seen any children or families out, and it is the summer holidays. Yeah, it is handy having two cameras. I've got this camera. I'll take a picture of me with this camera, taking a picture of that. See? <laughs> and this is my this is my camera. This one here, this uh, whatever you call it, this thing, AGFA, it's called. It's a backup camera. I just didn't fancy carrying the Kodak today. To tell the truth, because I've had to carry a lot of water. I've had to carry a lot of water today. I'm on my... I've drunk one bottle of juice. I've got oh, halfway through a bottle of water. I'm going to have another drink when we get up to the next gate. And I've got another bottle of juice and another bottle of water. Just in case I decided to have gone further. I mean it's the wind's dropped a bit now and you could easily say to yourself why don't you just go on to Bleeding Sheila? Go down Hellinge Hill. Why don't you just go on Sheila to Burn Hill and then down to the hospital to pick your bus up. And it could easily be decided when I get up past the ponies if I feel up to it do you know what I mean but at the moment I don't want any of this rushing business I'm enjoying this when I get to the next gate I'm going to check the time again because obviously I don't want to be hanging about for an hour and a half waiting for a bus, you know what I mean? Because I'm just going to miss one. What we're saying now, there's one on its way now to Hutton. Do you see what I mean? But the idea of doing Hutton today was because it's going to be the last time. Well, as far as we know, unless they do introduce another bus at another date, it is possible, because there's a lot of old people live in Hutton. But they might have arranged a community bus for those old people. They don't think about people like me, or out hiking, who might need a help with a bus. They don't think of that. They want us to walk. At the same time, they're not providing us. with transportation to get anywhere. They cut loads of people off from going to Cheddar now. <sighs> Whenever there's an opportunity on some of these spotlight Western Supermare sites, I, I, I always put it in about the 126. Because they've got to remember, 11,000 people signed a petition about the 126. And that was only the people that knew about the petition. There could have been double that. It's, look, it's a bit overgrown here. You can tell when it starts getting like this. I've never known it overgrown, really. That not many people are coming out along here. Maybe the locals are leaving the wood alone. Like Longwood. That looks sad when I seen it the other week. Yeah, I seen that after I was staying in Cheddar camping and I went for a big walk skirting Longwood. It looks sad and that was that was a that was a spooky wood. 
but it was also very beautiful with the water as well, the stream and the little pathways and of course in the spring, May the absolute beauty of the bluebells and the wild garlic my goodness Yeah, I can see golfers right up in the distance on the hill. So there are some golfers about. I mean, it's not a massive walk to do Pern Hill. But I am trying to be sensible because of my bones and my knee. I am trying to be sensible. Not to overdo it. Well, it's, we've got an exciting weekend of football. We've got Sweden playing Australia tomorrow. No, on not tomorrow, on Saturday. To get to decide who's going to get the bronze medal in the World Cup. This is women's football. Which has now opened up football to lots of countries. Giving support to women all over the world. To be able to play. Anyway, going back to the World Cup, yes, yeah, so England then will play Spain on Sunday. Don't forget, we are European champions. We won the European Cup last year. That's when it really, really started to take off uh, the interest. But now it's more open. People are talking about it. And, you know, it's, it's good. It's very good. And people look up to England as the pioneers of women's football as well. They're the pioneers for others to follow in these... Like Jamaican... Jamaica, they used to have to beg people for shoes to play football with. And now they're getting support from the... from different charities. Bob Marley's charity are giving money for, to help provide them with shirts and, and shoes. Is they're getting noticed because they are good and they have got skill. This is me reflecting, everyone. Just a reminder that this is my reflective journal and visual diary. Or you could say visual journal and reflective diary. You know, or one while something like that, anyway. Right, I'm just going to turn off for a minute. Just going to look down there. That's the um, keeper's cottage down there. They sometimes have three great big Great Danes there. Oh no, Irish wolfhounds, I mean. They must be out today because they're normally around the fence. Over there we've got the blonde ponies. that have been there ever since I've been coming here. And sometimes they go in that field. You're not supposed to go up that way, but I have done it once or twice. Uh, but you're not supposed to. It's a private road. So over and out, I'm going to take some photos.